Hello YouTube, this is RH Make Studio, and I wanted to make a quick little video uh, to kind of showcase my process of binding these parts together. So I'm gonna do this whole thing live. I'm not gonna do any voiceover or anything. This is just my process going from beginning to end. So if you have a small printer like me, I have a Neptune 4. You're gonna end up with a bunch of pieces that need connected. So this was originally printed in two pieces. You can see where I welded them together. And on the top side, you can see no filler or anything. I have no seam line. This is some layer line that is actually next to what I'm gonna be doing. But this helps you really knock these down so you're not just layering filler after layer of filler on there. And it's really gonna change your life. I hope you use it. If you find it useful, please uh, like and leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, let's get going. I have the two pieces for the dome of a Warhammer helmet that I'm working on. These need fitted together like this. And, uh, okay. So they fit really good. I had no warping on there. Let's go ahead and get this done. So, the first step is gonna be to get some masking tape. I have this thin masking tape. And I'm just gonna use this to tack together these pieces. So, this seems to be the flattest um, area that I have on here right now. So I'm gonna start right here on the inside if I can get there. I'm gonna hold them both down like this. And just to start, we wanna go in and tack these pieces together. So I'm gonna start right here and just weld these together. I'm gonna go deep with these first few hits. Then I'll come back in and just smooth right over them. And that's going to weld our material together pretty well. Some of the material that goes off to the side, you want to push that back towards the middle. Just to get a really strong connection in there. And that looks like it's going to be pretty good to hold together that part. Okay. Flip it over while the plastic is still hot. And make sure we're held together nice and tight. And that feels fantastic. I'm gonna hold it together like this while it cures. Not cures, but when it cools. First thing, this feels so smooth at the top here. I'm gonna get that put together as soon as I can. Okay, looks like I'm misaligned a little bit. I'm gonna push it back while it cools. Feels nice and smooth on the top. What you wanna make sure is that you have a very nice weld on the inside, something that's gonna be firm and it's gonna hold tight because we are not doing that much on the outside. So, I have two tack points now holding this together. I can go in and hit this whole rest of the seam. This part down here, I'm gonna have to push closed a little bit while I weld it together, which is fine, but let's hit this big line right in here. drop the wood burner, and we're going to hit this whole seam. Now, we can remove all this tape that's in our way. While I do this, be sure to wear proper PPE, as the fumes from this aren't great. I'm in, a, I'm in the garage, so I'm very well ventilated, um, and I'm not too worried about that, as I'm doing it in kind of short bursts here. Every time I print something on my printer, I will use brim supports. And a brim kind of welds your piece down to the bed and makes sure it can't warp or it tries to prevent warping. I've still had it warp, but it's okay. And what we're gonna do is take some of those brim supports. So I have just one strand of filament right here. What you're gonna do is push that down into your seam, just like this. And with your wood burner soldering on whatever you have, just very lightly tap it just to get some points melted in there. Try not to pull it like I just did. 
So that's gonna free it from your seam. That's fine, that gives me something to show. So I just hit it a few times over certain spots and it's holding that piece of brim in that seam. Let me get the rest. That, go in here. Good. Okay. So, I am going to go ahead and show you how to do the rest of it. So, any piece of support that's in there like that, you can see, you can still see it a little bit. So what we want to do is take our wood burner and very carefully go over the top and just mount that brim into our material. Have the very light touch while you do this. All you want to do is make it flat. You don't want to see the edges of the brim. Just like that. Let me take a look. Not through a camera. Looks pretty good. Okay. So, the goal of this is just to give us a basis to build on top of. Sanding this, you're not going to get all the way through this piece of brim since we've just melted the top layer through. And it's going to provide you with a nice, smooth surface. Even if you can still see your seam, when you go in with your uh, Bondo, to fill that in or whatever you want to use wood filler, it gives you a base for that to sit on. So you're not sitting here covering that same seam over and over again, hoping that it's going to stay covered this time. So I'm going to switch over to a time lapse. I'm going to do the rest of this and then I will talk to you after that. So I'll be right back. All right, so there's my entire seam done. If you feel it on your finger, it should feel almost like it's raised just a bit. And that's what you want. You don't want to dig into the material. You want it to sit on top or right in the top of that seam. Now, the next step is going to be to hit this with 120 grit sandpaper, 180 grit sandpaper, and then a 220. So I'm going to do that and then I will be right back. This is future me here to tell you that I actually welded the entire dome together to sand it down as one whole piece. So if you're confused as to how we got here, that is why. All right, so I'm back with the helmet after I sanded with 120 grit, and I just wanted to show you guys the results here. So I don't know about you, but I would much rather deal with one, we'll say two little divots on just this stretch rather than filling this whole seam over and over again with Bondo. So all I'm gonna have to deal with is these two little spots right here. Now, you can see some spots where I missed. You could always go back in and definitely fill these in with more filament. I'm just gonna go with the Bondo because it has a backing in there and it's so shallow, that should fill in really nicely. Here's the top. And here's the other side. Now this other side, I was rushing a bit it seems, so I missed a lot of this down in here, but this bug came out very nice and there's a little bit of a dip here, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll check back in soon after I sand with the 220 grit. All right, so this is after 220 grit and 180 as well. You we have this problem area, this problem area here, here, and a lot on this side. But this mohawk area only has one area that needs filled right there. So really, that just saved me on so much work that I would have to put in. So overall, what you wanna do when you're doing this is to definitely remember that you are adding material, not taking away. The moment you take away material is when you end up with these divots that will not come out with sanding that need filled. When you add material, you're able to take away and get this smooth finish. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope this helped. If it does and you try it out, let me know in the comments below.